But without further ado, I'd like to bring on Matt the Immortal Brown, who is a UFC welterweight headlining UFC Fight Night 40 in Cincinnati, taking on a Brazilian up-and-comer in Eric Silva. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm real good. How are you guys doing? Great. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to join us. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, man, I mean, you've had an incredible run the past couple years since 2012. You haven't had a loss. It, you're gone six straight. You're looking to make it seven. And you have to do it against a guy who, who has some potential danger in his hands. But as we know, you do hold that record for most knockouts in the UFC welterweight division. So tell me a little bit about looking ahead to this fight and what you expect from uh, Eric Silva. Um, you know, I don't have, I don't really know what to expect. You know, that's kind of his uh, forte. Is really unpredictable, and you know, it's hard to really, you know, get a grasp on what what he's going to do. I mean, you know, judging from his past performances, I can expect he's probably going to be ready to bang and and you know, swing hard and where he's going to look to knock each other out. But you know, he's he's really unpredictable. I don't really know what's going to happen. So. You know, I've just got to be ready for everything and, um, you know, just go in there and do, do what we can see what happens. Listening to you describe the way the fight's playing out in your head seems like this is the exact type of fight you want. Uh, I want any fight. You... Uh, there's there's not any particular fight that I want. I, I like every fight. That's, you know, I, I love this sport to death, you know, and it's, uh, I, I just like being there fighting, you know what I mean? It's not really about... Uh, um, that certain type of fight that I want. I mean, of course, it's always fun, you know, to to get all bloody and and have your knuckles all bloody and and you know walk out of there hurting. But you know, I, fighting is just a a really fun thing for me. And this has to be awesome for you because you do train out of Cincinnati. Although I do want to ask you a couple of questions about your training camp for this fight in just a minute. But you are get you have the opportunity to fight right in your your native Ohio. How does that feel for you? Uh, of course, it's great. You know, the, I, I don't really um, think about it too much. You know, I'm a, I'm a look. I think of what's going to happen. You know, or what I would like to happen is I look back on it and think of how cool it was. As for now, it's just a fight. It doesn't matter where it's at or, uh, you know, any all those things don't really matter. But when I look back, I can show my kids and, um, you know, watch it on DVR or whatever and say, wow, that was that was really cool. It's the same way, like, I fought on, uh, I think it was UFC 96, I think, in Columbus, Ohio. Columbus is where my actual hometown where I live. So, you know, that was... Uh, you know, it, when you're in the moment, you know, a fight's just a fight, right? But then you can look back and say, wow, man, that was a pretty awesome thing I did. That was an amazing fight, the one you're talking about at UFC 96 against Pete Sell. And we were actually talking about that this weekend, but uh, yeah. we saw Takanora Gomi and Isaac uh, Valley Flag fight. And uh, Gomi was unloading on him a little bit and was like, hey, hey, ref, you know, you're going to stop this, you know? And I remember you doing that with Pete Sell. I mean, you put a beating on him. That had to be nice to do in Columbus. Yeah, that was really cool. But it was, it was, uh, Gomi's fight and my fight were way different. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Because there wasn't no reason for him to stop that uh, uh, Valley Flag fight when, when he was just bloody and you know what I mean? He wasn't uh slowing down. Like Valley Flag fought like a warrior from beginning to end and he was moving around. You know, the only the reason that I did it the way I did it on UFC ninety six was because the referee actually had stopped the fight and then <laughs> I had to start going again. So yeah, a little, a little bit of a different situation. Yeah, yeah, that was uh Eve Levine, I believe, and I remember up until before then I thought Eve Levine was one of the best refs out there yeah. and then after, I was like, Wow, you're gonna get someone killed in there. That was but then I remember you walking out back in the st- backstage and uh asking Dana, you were like, Hey, that got knocked out of the night, right? And uh unfortunately you didn't, but you've won quite a few uh, you know, p- performances of the night as of late. Uh how has that helped when you have such a large family? Um now, what was the last question? There? Well, I mean, how, yeah, how has that helped, helped? Uh, with the you know bringing home performance of the night and you know bringing home those bonuses? How has that helped you know with you and your family? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, uh, of course it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, gosh, you, you can't uh, 
you know, I imagine getting, you know, extra $50,000 a year or more, you know, I mean, yeah, there's, it changes your life a little bit, but you know, what I, what I use more is to invest in the future. Cause I know that there's a lot more money ahead of me as long as I can stay on this path. So I'll try to invest it more in, in that future training. Uh, speaking of your training, I've heard that you've brought in a guy who holds a win over Eric Silva, John Fitch from American Kickboxing Academy. Is that accurate that you're working with him for this camp to try to figure out how to solve the Eric Silva puzzle? Uh, yeah, we train together a, a lot for this camp. And is yeah. it up in uh, Syracuse also, I was reading? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, what have you really specifically taken from Fitch? Obviously, you know, that that top wrestling that he has, the ability to really take a fight. I mean, he had fight of the night against Eric Silva. So what have you specifically taken away from that training with him? Um, man, you know, a lot of it's just, uh, you know, oh, gosh, I don't know. That's a tough question. Um, there's not really, like, one specific you know, things or whatever. It's just kind of the, he's just kind of the, the right guy to help guide me, you know, for the philosophy, for the camp and for the the training, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's not really like a, you know, I, I try not to get too detailed with things like that because then you start getting into, you know, trying to predict a fight and, uh, make you know, you start making mistakes when you do that. So I just, I keep it a little more open ended, but he's definitely the right guy just to to help with the mindset for the fight and what type of fight it needs to be to beat him. And and as a training partner, I mean, you know, he gives you a, a great push, and you know, he's he's tough as they come. So uh, it's, it's not really so much about uh, specific because it is about broad things. And uh, were you able at all to work with Mark Beecher ahead of this camp? I know that you guys have, have worked together a lot in the past, but I think he had moved away uh, briefly. And He's I, in Virginia now, yeah, I believe. Yeah, so I was wondering if you if you two were working together again for this camp. Um, no, he was actually moved to Oklahoma. So. Oh, he's in Oklahoma. Uh, he's a, he's a yeah. wanderer. <laughs> so you're not, have you worked with him at all this camp? What's that? Have you been able to work with him at all or no? Uh, yeah, I wasn't, wasn't able to make it happen this time, but, yeah, I look forward to getting him back in the picture. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you definitely, you know, you've definitely come into your own with Mark. I love watching, you know, what you've done as of late. And, you know, you, you talk about how much you love fighting, but you've been out for a while uh, with the injury. What have you been uh, doing with yourself to kind of keep yourself busy and, and keep your mind Focus on getting back in shape and ready for the fight. Um, well, uh, you know, when I got injured, you know, I, uh, first obviously I did a lot of rehab. You know, that was the the main concern. Um, but let's see. So uh, I had a pretty busy schedule actually. Um, I went over to Afghanistan for two weeks. Um, visited the troops over there. Did a little tour. Um, then I went on the uh, vacation slash honeymoon with my wife, uh, which uh, we never had a honeymoon, and we've never actually been on vacation before, so that was the first time we ever uh, went on vacation. Oh, good and and um, other than that, you know, just kind of spend a lot of time with the family, and you know, just, I, you know, this, this sport, uh, you know, the, the way I, uh, the type of person I am, I'm, I take it very seriously, and I train very hard and consistent, and um, it takes a, a huge uh, amount of time and energy out of me every day. So it, it was actually sort of a, almost a blessing in disguise to kind of you know get a little bit of a break. I haven't really taken a break. Um, since about, I mean, I don't even know if I'd call it a break, you know, when when I was, I think it was about 2000, uh, a few years ago when um, my dad actually passed away, and, like, that was my break, you know, so it's not really a break, you know, so I just, I, I've just been, you know, grinding for so long, it was sort of a little blessing in disguise to kind of sit back and uh, not worry about anything for about a month, and, uh and, you know, I was able to do lots of rehab and 
get my uh, myself situated again, and now I'm um, back to the way things were before. Well, happy to hear. I'm glad you got the to do those things, and I'm really excited to see you fight. Uh, we're obviously we're talking to Matt Brown right now, taking on Eric Silva uh, on May 10th, headlining the card. It's got to be exciting for you. Your main event. Uh, yeah, as a guy, like I was saying before, you know, it's a, man, you know, it's just a fight. You know, what I mean, it's a first fight and last fight. It's all really the, the same thing. Um, again, looking back on it, it's going to be. I'm going to say, wow, it was the main event. That was freaking awesome. Right but, now, it, it, it's a fight. Go ahead. I was just wondering, you know, with the whole welterweight division the way it is, all shook up right now. How much do you feel like a win over Silva puts you back in that talk right up there in the mix with guys like Tyron Woodley and Rory McDonald as far as getting a shot at the belt? Yeah, I'll worry about that after I beat him because uh, uh, unless I beat him, it's an irrelevant question. So I, I, I'm, I'm just only concerned with beating him right now. Love it. Love that mentality. Well, uh, Matt, I know you uh, also keep busy with your your two twin boys. I, I saw that they had some pictures that you had some pictures of the, of them getting ready to train. Are they also taking up MMA from a young age? <laughs> it, it seems like they are. I mean, you know, they're only three years old, so who knows? But when they when they see a cage, they know exactly what to do, and they love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, listen, Matt, we have to actually get uh, going out here to a commercial break. Just We are all out of time on the interview. We really, really appreciate uh, your time here and just want to wish you all the best coming up here. UFC Fight Night 40, May 10th, when you take on Eric Silva. All right, my pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot.